Hello Cedar Village, this is Rabbi Drew, your Director of Pastoral Care, I'm joined along with Jessica, your art therapist, and we are back for our second year, this is our second year in a row, we're even though not everybody can come here to the sukkah at the Meyerson JCC, we are excited to bring the sukkah art exhibit from the Meyerson JCC to you. This is the ninth year of the exhibit and our second year in a row that Jessica and I have uh, come here to bring the exhibit to you. If for those less familiar, Jessica is our art therapist and I am your director of pastoral care. So we are here and for those less familiar, what, uh, you know, the Sukha art exhibit, okay, art and exhibit, that's fairly self-explanatory. There's, and in fact, I think there's 34, there's over 30 pieces 34 of art. pieces represented behind us from different individuals and organizations. Right, so that's the easy part. So what is Sukha? So we are currently in the midst of the holiday of Sukkot, which is, we find it in the Torah, in the, in the Jewish Bible, especially in Leviticus 23. We also find it in Numbers. There are multiple places that we find the holiday of Sukkot. It kind of comes on the heels of Yom Kippur, and it's celebrated for about a week's time and it's the it's a fall harvest festival really ultimately and part of the fall harvest festival is not just it's part of like connecting with nature mm -hmm. so there's kind of uh, like this liminal nature to uh, Sukkot now Sukkot translates to either huts booths some even translate it as tabernacles and the idea is that we try to spend as much time we try to spend our lives uh, during this week or so in uh, spending them, especially eating, drinking, maybe just hanging out, even sleeping and not so conducive here in Ohio, but uh, <laughs> but certainly in Israel, it's, it's definitely a lot more conducive uh -huh. to sleeping in for uh, roughly this week's time. So that's a, the main component. It's that's the name of the holiday. And here at the Meyerson JCC, they've constructed year after year, a lovely sukkah, which is a nice hut that, and there are even chairs and tables. People can sit in and eat eat and, and hang out with people all the while enjoying the many pieces of art here on exhibit and it's called under one roof because it's all really under one roof as we see and um, and the concept of bringing um, the community together into this um, so many of the organizations are Jewish organizations some are not some are individuals mm -hmm. and so to be able to come together through this exhibit and through this time um, to, to be a part of a community. This year's theme is re resilience and renewal. And part of that actually is to celebrate the bicentennial of Cincinnati's organized Jewish community. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a whole bunch of things. In fact, this weekend it's is the kickoff. Yeah, right? it's kicking off. The kickoff, which is especially happening with the Ish Festival, uh, 200 years, uh, really actually the very first institution uh, established here in, in the organized Jewish community in Cincinnati is the Chestnut uh, Cemetery. So mm -hmm. that's actually really where things are kicking off amongst uh, things. But here we're here to celebrate this resilience and renewal. I think part of it is because of the craziness that's gone on really in the last year and a half mm -hmm. in our country, really around the world, let's be honest. Uh, so we have a bunch of art. 34 pieces to be exact. Yes, yeah, so we have 34 pieces here at the Meyerson JCC's Under One Roof uh, Sukkah Art Exhibit. We, of course, here from Cedar Village, Jessica led the direction of uh, our panel, right? So excited to share that with all of you. Many of you have seen it in person, but the rest of you will see it on this video, and then you'll see it again when it comes back to Cedar Village in October. Awesome, wonderful. Uh, we'll be covering several pieces in the exhibit today. We can't cover all 34, but I've picked out um, a few to share with you and to tell you a little bit about the inspiration for them. Our very own piece from Cedar Village, featured behind me. Uh, we worked on this piece for over two months once the theme was introduced to us. Uh, I brought the theme back to a group of residents. Uh, we met in the deli and we talked about what is resilience and renewal? What does that mm -hmm. mean? Um, how do people relate to that from their own experiences? And so we took those ideas, which started off with words and symbols and phrases, and we put that together. We talked about colors and themes and ideas and the idea of growth and sprouting new life hmm. came out. So with all those things in mind and a, a couple of chats with a couple people around the building, I came up with this design behind us. And, and then we worked throughout the building, and residents from all parts of the building worked together to add details and layer the paint, be photographed for it. 
And actually one of our dear residents there also wrote the artist statement, which I will read for you. It kind of explains a little bit about the thoughts behind the piece. Cedar Village, along with the rest of the world, has been through a terrifying year. Yet our residents shared the resilience to endure this challenge by working together toward renewal. Residents in every area of Cedar Village helped to create this artwork. They chose the words to express the strong roots which nourish our sprout. It's a little bit bigger than a sprout. <laughs> and our spirits towards renewal of life. The strong roots include love, family, patience, perseverance, heritage, community, friends, prayer, and hope. Sukkot is the Jewish harvest holiday. The Sukkot booths remind us of our portable housing during 40 years of wandering. As we have before, we can work together through this continuing challenge and start to build a harvest of hope for all. I thought that was a really lovely statement, um, well written, and it really kind of sums it all up. So when you look at this piece, a lot of people have asked me, how did you do this? How did you work these figures, which we'll try to get some close-ups of for you. And these are actual pictures of residents, right? There are six residents yeah. that agreed to be photographed for this piece. Um, they're actually each carrying a watering can to contribute life to the the sprout in the middle. Were they actually holding the watering can when yes. the pictures were taken? Yes. Really? So we wow. posed them with the watering can <laughs> um, and had them pretend that there was an imaginary plant in front of them that wow. they were going to water. So we had a little element of play <laughs> and drama in this. So each person was photographed and then what I did was I um, printed the photograph out just the right size on the color printer right there in the building, mm -hmm. nothing fancy, uh, cut it out very, very carefully and glued it on our background. Not that difficult of a process, but it came out with a really spectacular appearance wow. and, and brought our residents truly into the artwork. That's great. And how did you come up? Is this a sidewalk here, the gray? Yeah, yeah. you know, when this was originally painted, it was just gold and this dark sky above um, and a few people looked at the piece and said we need some sort of separation mm. some sort of ground to walk on okay. and so this path was developed and it was painted by one of our residents very neat very neat how were the how were the words the words were developed through interacting with the residents i guess yes so in yes. our original session group session that we got together and talked about this idea i had a big dry erase board there in the deli <laughs> and all the words that were come up that came people came up with and just threw out initial words this actually is all of them that came out during wow. that session wow. so it was the the kind of original sparks for the mm -hmm. art that's great. Yeah, obviously the renewal is, is the new, uh, you know, the spark, the sprout. I imagine the resilience is the hardiness of, of I guess, just people, right? Just people. Just, you know, when I was talking about this artwork, everyone said, we've been through so much in our lives. We've seen, we've seen pandemics before, you know, we have, <laughs> We have residents that are over 100 years old that have been through this before. Um, they said, we've seen tragedy and war and death, and yet we've always, as a Jewish community, found a way to overcome those things mm. um, and renew our, our sense of selves and our, and our lives. So that's where these roots came in. They said, we have to keep all of these strong things and values in mind as we're trying to come back from that and remember what's gotten us through hard times before. Mm. That's wonderful. All right. Well, great. And this is the ninth. And you've been in charge of you've organized all nine years of the the under one roof contributions from Cedar Village, right? Yes. So yes. just after I started at Cedar Village nine years ago, I was um, asked to participate in this exhibit. It was the very first one that the JCC had ever done. So no one really knew what it was going to be. Hmm. And so if you look in the gallery uh, just outside um, the CRCC, at Cedar Village, you can see all of our past pieces starting from the first year to the most recent on display right now. And you can see how those have developed over the years. They have made the entry smaller. So this one is about half of the size of the first seven. 
Last really? year, we, we went with a smaller piece as well. And it was just due to size constraints here at the JCC. Is it as, because they invited more contributions? Yeah, there were more artists and more organizations contributing. So to allow for space for everyone, they had to make the pieces a bit smaller. Okay. It's actually worked out well for us because it's easier to transport around the building <laughs> and have more people involved in it versus a six foot painting yeah. is a little hard to maneuver. So, but if you look in the gallery, you can see all the history of our work on this. That's great. Wonderful. All right. Well, thank you so much, Jessica. And now we're going to check out some highlights, right? How many? Yeah, I, I picked out um, a half a dozen or so pieces that we will look at today. Great. Awesome. All right. Well, on to the next one. We now have uh, this year's piece by Jewish Hospital Mercy Health. It's their entry. I believe they have been participating in this exhibit for most of the years. I remember their pieces always being really special. This year, their their artwork is so bright it's so colorful and it's so positive i will start by reading their artist statement to you because i like to hear from the perspective of the artist and then i'll also share a few of my own thoughts or observations on the piece so it says here in this nice little book that the jcc has provided for us so if you're wondering what i'm looking at throughout the video this is a nice guide to the exhibit and if you happen to get out here to see it you can pick this up and look but it says that the Jewish hospital is a community hospital faithful to its Jewish heritage and grounded in the Jewish and Catholic traditions of service to the community. Our purpose is to reveal God's love for all, especially the poor and vulnerable, through the delivery of compassionate healthcare services and the education of healthcare professionals. Battling the pandemic, coming together with strength, hope, and compassion, learning, trying, and praying, facing the challenge while embracing others' solitude, endless nights and endless tears, we persevered together. We came out stronger, closer, with cheers and a deeper, stronger connection to life. We are resilient. Wow, that's a really beautiful statement. So I love this piece. When I came into the exhibit today, before we started, this was the first piece I immediately was drawn to. And I love the colors. The blue and the orange are contrasting colors, so they naturally form this dynamic image. And as you can see, they've got the um, theme of the exhibit printed right here, resilience and renewal. But the central part is an elderly person. We can definitely relate to that, masked. Um, and as if a younger young lady, maybe his granddaughter, is embracing him with her head laid on his arm. Behind him, you see a cheerful healthcare worker. You always say you see a smiling eyes behind our masks. Those are definitely smiling eyes you see. Everyone's just so happy in this image. As if they're coming back together after a time of separation. Or they've just gotten good news. We don't often get to give that good news <laughs> in healthcare, so it's nice to see those moments shining through. What I also really love about this image is the background. So it is created as if it's broken and fragmented, like stained glass, yet it is also cohesive. You see the color, the blue is connecting all of the pieces. It appears to be figures gathered in the background and from the look of the clothing on them, I assume that they are doctors and nurses. It looks like the outlines of scrubs, lab coats, and healthcare workers. So when I look at this piece, the way I relate to it is as if that is the crowd of healthcare workers that are behind the scenes that made this interaction you see in the foreground possible. They are the people that are in the hospitals, in the healthcare facilities, working tirelessly through the pandemic to help bring our families back together. So it's really a, a joyful and positive piece to see as you walk into the exhibit. So just below the Jewish hospital piece, we have another really interesting piece. Um, it's much more subtle and soft, so it might be a little more difficult to see on camera, but I think we can get it for you. It's by an, a local artist named Susan Klug Kahn. And she's actually an independent artist working in a variety of media and styles. She has a history as an illustrator and a graphic designer. 
And you can see her work in many v venues. She sells her work online. So you're welcome to check, if you're on a computer, you're welcome to check out her work. She's got some really beautiful things. She likes to transform furnish furniture and furnishings into unique visual statements when she's not doing canvases like this. So she said this year's theme resonated in terms of the pandemic for her, but also because of the 200th um, anniversary of Cincinnati Jewish community. She said she is part of the Jewish community, and so she reflected on that when she was creating this piece. She focused on the understanding that we live, we survive, we overcome, and we build for ourselves, but also for future generations. So we don't just do it alone. She said, when I think of resilience and renewal, I think of continuity. I understand the resiliency of the individual, but also think of the resiliency of the family and the community, however one might define that. Resilience can be born of strength through adversity and a strong sense of tradition, and passing that strength to our traditions on, on traditions from generation to generation, to her is the essence of renewal. So I really love this piece one because it's very subtle and it's soft so you have to come close and look at it in detail you can tell her history as an illustrator and a designer because she has actually done this in pen it's just ink so it's not painted like many of the others in acrylic it's delicately drawn onto the canvas um, and you see in the center this broken tree. So it's an old tree. It's got these really strong roots, but there's not actually much of the ground surrounding it to hold it up. That has weathered away over time. And then you see, if you look really closely, one of the lower branches is broken and hanging off. Yet the rest of the tree is still standing and it will go on. In the distance, you see smaller trees that have perhaps sprouted from the seeds that have come from that central tree. And then she has a quote there in the center of the image. It says, I found a world full of carob trees. Just as my ancestors planted them for me, so I plant them for my children. So I found this really interesting because the context for this statement is the story, a really fascinating story. It's kind of like the Talmudic Rip Van Winkle uh, featuring a guy named Choni the Circle Maker in which he finds someone who's planting a carob tree basically and he asks about what are you, you know, what are you doing? He's planting a carob tree, wonderful. He goes, he has an experience, he goes to sleep, he wakes up 70 years later. Basically the, the Talmudic Rip Van Winkle story. He wakes up and it turns out the person who's then planting again is the grandchild, the grandson of the person he had met prior to his long and lengthy slumber. So that's the context for this. And it's about having a sense of planting for the future, even though you yourself, your endeavors, what you're doing is not necessarily going to come back to you. You're not going to reap the benefits of those, those fruits. Yet it's about thinking about the future and even something decades and, uh, and, and uh, you know, generations down the line. But just as this person uh, found this world full of carob trees and planted by their ancestors, so too he's thinking about the future. So that's the context for, uh, that's the, the fascinating Talmudic Rip Van Winkle story uh, from which this draws. Thank you for sharing that. I love the, the context. And so we get different perspectives on this, the artist's perspective, um, my perspective as a viewer coming at it and, and noticing the details in the image and it really comes together as a beautiful piece for this theme. Cool. For our next highlight, this is from Adith Israel and I know we have some congregants of Adith Israel at Cedar Village. So this is the contribution and it's not really clear what is going on if you were just walking by but apparently according to their statement this is the scene of Jacob wrestling with an angel from the book of Genesis. Now, it's funny actually, there's so many different possibilities of like, what does that mean? What's an angel? Is it a person? Is it a, an angel? There's, so, there's probably a handful of different understandings or different interpretations. Is it just an angel? Maybe it's really a man. Okay. Maybe 
Uh, maybe it's specifically the angel of his brother Asa. Like, who is it? Maybe, and some, especially Hasidic interpretations, maybe it's really he was wrestling with his own self. Oh. Uh, so there's lots of different possibilities of interpre interpretive uh, strategies. Um, the, the verse they're specifically quoting from for this is uh, 3229 in the book of Genesis. Your name shall, shall no longer be Jacob, but actually should now be Israel, for you have striven with beings both divine and human and have prevailed. So uh, it's funny because the Jewish nation, the, the Jewish people are called B'nai Israel, the children of Israel, and part of the name is stems all back to this, this particular verse, which is that uh, that there's this idea of wrestling, uh, both with the divine and with other humans. That um, And so it's, it's funny because Jews are always like, it's as opposed to, for instance, like Islam. So Islam okay. means submission. Mm -hmm. So that's a very important, just the name is, it tells you a lot about the people and the belief mm -hmm. system. And Jews, uh, we wrestle with things. <laughs> we've got questions. Struggle. Yeah, we've got questions, we've got complaints, you know, and so mm -hmm. that, uh, so that really all stems back to this interaction yeah. that they're depicting here of Jacob fighting with the angel and then having his name now changed into Yisrael, to Israel. So looking at it from a creative and artistic perspective, I find it so interesting. It's handled in this very organic way. There are absolutely no hard lines in mm -hmm. the image whatsoever. It's handled it with this glow, glowing yellow and orange color in the background surrounding Jacob and, and this angelic form there, we'll say, which actually is, and I, I find it really interesting the way that you describe that, very similar in appearance. And, mm -hmm. and so it might be a reflection. Um, so I, I really love the handling. It is done in acrylic. So if there's any question about what is that done in, how's that painted? Um, the paint is very fluid. You can actually, if you get close to it, see the sketching that went on underneath it. So it was a beautiful rendering. Mm -hmm. You can see some of the pencil marks in there. And it was actually created by a team of four artists. So there wasn't one single artist that contributed to this. The artists were Louis Cornelius, Rabbi Elena Stein, Susan Lawson, and Debbie Abrams all contributed to this piece. So I, I think, find it really interesting just as um, a creative piece in the show. And I love that the fact that it makes you stop and, and wonder and curious. <laughs> And like, how does that relate? There are obviously pieces in the show that are very self-explanatory and they they immediately you see how they relate to the theme. This one definitely makes you stand and think and consider it a little bit further. I love that. Well, That's what the, art can do. Well, you can see the resilience because yeah. it's it, when you think about the story, well, he Jacob was able to withstand and, and really fight off, wrestle with both humans and divine, as well as the renewal, that mm -hmm. his name is now changed, it's transformed, that his identity is now being renewed, as it were, mm -hmm. uh, which is, uh, there are two things that I'm like really curious about this, okay. why they depicted Jacob as being naked, which makes no sense. Okay. I don't, yeah. it's not like he was asleep in the middle of the night and he's attacked by an angel, uh, he, like maybe, you know, cause back in ancient times they slept naked, fine, but like he was going back to retrieve something, he left, he wouldn't be, uh, just prancing about nakedly so that's a, a i just don't understand that at it's all fair observation um the other thing which is not so much a criticism it's just more of a curiosity is the the scene actually itself happened in the middle of the night so it would be dark um ah. so this is really funny that it shows it almost as if it's in midday high sun it's super bright um but that might just be more of an artistic choice to really highlight what's you know what's in the foreground the wrestling but uh, I'm still, I don't understand the naked piece to it. Those would be interesting questions for the, for the artist, absolutely. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I will say, mentioning the color, in many of the past videos that we've shot and we, in many of the artworks we've looked at, um, the in intervention of, of God or mm. um, is often depicted using the same sort of yellow tone we've mm. seen in many yeah. artworks before. So perhaps that's where that's coming from. Yeah. That would be how I might be able to relate that. Otherwise, I have no explanation <laughs> for it whatsoever, other than it's a really beautiful color. Yeah, it stands out. And it out. really glows out here yeah. when the sun hits it in the sukkah. Absolutely. All right, thank you. The next art piece that we have here that we're focusing on is this by done by Cindy Loon. Now, it's not really uh, so obvious, you know, looking at it from afar where you are. We'll, we'll try to, to focus in a little bit more as we go on. But 
it, it looks kind of like a sun with a bunch of black things coming out of it. Maybe rays, yeah. rays of black light, I guess. I'm not really sure exactly how that works. There is some underneath here, some yellowish orangey-ness, which in some ways kind of relates back to what we were just talking mm -hmm. about. How much i mean clearly it's meant to be the sun but at the same time as we'll talk about it there's certainly divine aspects going mm -hmm. on so she has in the middle be the light i'm not really sure uh, based on our artist statement what the exact connection is I'll, I'll speculate in a moment but what's really cool and and we'll we'll focus on this in a moment are all these different things which are actually she printed out 613 meets vote uh the commandments so now what these are they're not specified there's nothing talking about 613 in the Torah or anywhere in Hebrew scripture. However, there is a rabbinic statement in the Babylonian Talmud, uh, Tractate Makot, if anybody's interested, where a rabbi says there are 613 commandments. And he basically breaks it down saying there's a whole bunch that correspond to the days of the solar calendar and a bunch that relate to the uh, the limbs and, and various aspects of people's bodies. So the 365 corresponding to the solar year, because each day you have a commandment telling you, go do this. And then you, the, the ones relating to your body are all the, the, the proscriptive things, things you're not supposed to do. Um, don't murder, for instance, you know, that's that sort of thing. So those things you should avoid your body. You have a part of your body that says, don't do this right so don't do this action and so she actually has printed them out and mod podge them on yeah it appears she, she's used mod podge which is something that we use pretty regularly in in our work uh cindy loon is a graphic designer she's a local artist and she often uses mixed media in her work a combination of paint and paper and collage materials and so that is actually what she's done she's got a painted background and actually now that looking at it the black background is even probably glued on itself but you're right she's used these tiny strips 613 strips of paper black paper printed in white text using all the same text and very carefully and meticulously glued them on in this radiating pattern uh, it, it is a, a really interesting piece. Unfortunately, I think the weather has not done it justice. Um, all of these pieces are hanging outside, so they have to sustain the heat and the wind and the rain, and those are not forgiving to a lot of the <laughs> art materials that we use. And so, unfortunately, some of the Mod Podge has kind of clumped up, and a lot of the white that you'll see is kind of covering a lot of the words. But the point gets across, and it's it's really a very interesting take on this theme that she's done. We had one of her pieces um, in the exhibit last year, and it did come and hang in a temporary exhibit at Cedar Village. Wow. And she also used text in that image in a really interesting way. So that's kind of a, a style of hers, is to incorporate text um, not just about the words, but to use it visually mm -hmm. to get the point across. Wow. So I, I, I mentioned earlier, I have a speculation as to why she used this phrase, be the light, which I don't know what its origin is, but I think what she's trying to get across is for someone, she, she mentions in her artist statement that she's inspired by the Musar movement, or some people call it Musar movement, uh, which is a 19th century sort of a, a working on one's own individual self. That's really what it's about. And I think the intention is for someone, an individual to be a light unto the world, to other people. Mm -hmm. And the way to accomplish it is through the method of the 613 commandments. Now I, I will say, uh, amusingly enough, so the, really the enumeration, trying to actually count, I mentioned earlier, it's a Talmudic, probably from the third century, maybe fourth century of the common era, rabbi who came up with this notion of 613 commandments. But in the medieval era, we had several rabbis come up with their own lists. Like, what is it? And of course, as you can imagine, people People disagreed. <laughs> oh, I think these 11 shouldn't be counted. These 11 should be counted. You know, there was, you know, like for the most part, they're easily over 500. Everybody can agree upon. There's just, you know, some disputes. So I imagine she probably went with Rambam's, probably Maimonides, 613. That's probably the most famous enumeration of these 613. Um, and uh, so I think that's her idea of that one can work on one's own self and sort of be the light to other people, to the world uh, in a more broad sense through the, the you know, doing, performing the various uh, commandments in the Torah. 
Great. Thank you so much. And yeah. uh, it's nice to have this dialogue with you. It helps <laughs> me understand the piece in a whole new way. Absolutely. So as mentioned earlier in our introduction, when we were talking about the Jewish Bicentennial in Cincinnati, um, Rabbi mentioned the Chestnut Street Cemetery. So this piece that we have in front of us is actually made by the Jewish Cemeteries of Greater Cemetery and their their entry into the exhibit definitely relates as much to this exhibit as it does to the bicentennial so in their artist statement that we've been referencing all along it says that um, in honor of this milestone they have been renovating the chestnut street cemetery's existing walls and fences and cleaning the delicate monuments of the community's earliest settlers in addition, to reflect our growth and the rich history and heritage, we've created a new educational plaza, which I believe is what is depicted here in this image. And at the cemetery, which um, this are in, it's in the West End neighborhood. They're hoping the groups will come and gather and kind of remember your, the history of Cincinnati through what they've built and renewed there in the space. So I find this, it's just a really pretty depiction. Um, it's, you see the, the old cemetery in the background and some of the gravestones. And then you see this monument here that has been restored and the plaza. I was looking at some of the photographs uh, on their website as I was looking into the piece. And it's, it's just a really beautiful um, impressionistic style depiction of the space using soft pastel colors and light brush strokes. So what I haven't yet found out for sure, but what I'm speculating is the artist who did this depiction, the name here is in the corner and it's Helen Br Hillenbrand. And Hillenbrand is an actual um, common name in Cincinnati. And there is an artist in Cincinnati that's quite famous for illustration and painting named Will Hillenbrand. So I'd be interested to ask and find out a little bit more if that is indeed who created this piece. Um, his work is generally done as illustrations and he has many published children's books. So it might be something that you have passed by or seen in your experiences. We have this really beautiful, colorful piece to share with you next. It, it was created by the Jewish Fertility Foundation. Um, and in case you haven't heard of them, which I hadn't, I was very curious about that. They provide financial assistance, emotional support, and educational programming to Jewish people with medical infertility. Really interesting to know that we have that organization here in Cincinnati. Um, they offer fertility grants, discounts, loans, um, and they have a fertility buddies program that helps families who are having those same sorts of challenges um, to connect with one another. But with that in the background, uh, Artistically, this is just a really stunning piece. The colors are really jewel-like. We have this beautiful pomegranate, which is sprouting a tree of life. Um, there's some goldfish swimming underneath, the sun, the moon. Boy, I mean, this has just got it all right in one piece. So I will reference their artist statement because it might give a little bit more of a background as to why they chose the images that they did. It says, this year's theme of resilience and renewal dovetails naturally with the Jewish Fertility Foundation's mission. Here is a large globe-like pomegranate, the traditional fruit of autumn, of rebirth, and of fertility. Open, showing its luscious seeds, and a pomegranate tree in full fruit grows from its crown, watched over by the fiery sun and full moon. The tree, symbolically and sensuously shaped like an onion dome, or like an upside down heart with the tip at the top pointing to the sky and dipping below touching the earth. So it's just really a beautiful representation. One thing that we often try to do in our artworks at Cedar Village and if you look in the gallery you can see that we use a lot of metallic paint throughout almost all of the artwork. We've incorporated it in some way. This piece does too. You can see, and I love, the sun is just like beaming on it right now, but it's glistening in gold. They've used a lot of metallic tones, not only in the gold, but in their other paints that they've used. It is done in acrylic. And so it naturally has kind of a sheen to it, but the gold that they have mixed throughout and mixed in with the other colors really makes it glow in a beautiful way. So we have another gorgeous colored piece 
here in the bottom. But like like a couple of the pieces we've looked at before today, this one didn't come very clearly to me with the theme. I find it beautiful, but I had to look into it a little bit more to find out who made it, what's it about, how does it relate. So this artwork was submitted by the Office of Human Relations, um, and to, which promotes the building of positive relationships between and among various groups in Cincinnati. It's part of the city of Cincinnati. So it's kind of nice that we have that. And this was created and commissioned by a young artist named Ariel Miller, a local artist, who uh, attends a creative arts high school. And she was chosen to do the piece for them. So it was done by a young teenage artist. She wrote in the artist statement that she began her process by asking a question, what has knowledge of our past and understanding of our present? And she immediately thought of water and nature because the history and knowledge and the presence that they hold. She created a sketch of how she wanted to present those two ideas together and combine them into a single image. And then she knew she wanted to combine a butterfly in it as well. So we see, looking at this green shape over there, that is the butterfly. And then she has this wave coming out from it. It says, after many of my sketches, my sister helped me with the final layout of combining all of the elements. Overall, it took about a week to complete the piece and reach my vision. My panel speaks about how nature and water are resilient because they've been around since the creation of our planet and have experienced countless time periods up until the present day. Nature has always found a way to survive the hardest circumstances. It renews itself through processes like decomposition and the water cycle. Its biotic and abiotic factors all work together to keep the cycle of renewal going. Water will always find a way to return to itself and renew the cycle that sustains this earth. What ties this whole piece together is the sun in the middle containing helping hands. So this is interesting. Until I read the artist piece and I got closer and the light hit it just the right way, I didn't even see it. So right here, and done in very, very subtly in two shades of yellow, she's got two hands within the sun. It's very, very subtle. Like I said, I did not see it the first two times I looked at it, but I find it very interesting that she layered that element in. And she said, this imagery represents how the Office of Human Relations is a light in our community and how they're willing to listen to feedback and help those in need. So it's great to know that we have such a thing in Cincinnati. It's great to know that they also are paying attention to local artists and supporting them, even in our youth. I also did an interview with the Office of Human Relations that hopefully we'll get to share with you guys soon about our own piece today. So the next piece we have to share with you is um, entered today into the art exhibit by Most Outgrowing LLC. And we actually shared one of their pieces last year in our video of the Sukkah exhibit. I remember it was a standout piece for me. Um, but they're an organization focused on helping others grow beyond their expectations and developing their purpose through arts. So they, they basically do a lot of what I do as an art therapist in helping people reach their goals and use art to kind of express themselves. So this was a commissioned piece. They asked an artist named Adoria Maxberry to create the, the piece. And so I do have her artist statement and kind of how she came up with it. But initially, before I get into that, just looking at it, we have all these beautiful patterns, um, lots of graphic images in the back. We have white on blue and the, these beautiful patterns in the woman's hair. We have lemons and lemonade, <laughs> so we naturally can relate to, to that idea of making, using lemons and something that's sour to make something sweet and delicious, but we'll see exactly what she says about it. She said, while reflecting on this year's theme, she realized that resilience and renewal could be embodied in an approach of making lemonade out of lemons. True to her artistic style, this saying is woven into the background of the panel. So when you look really closely, I mentioned that there are patterns in the background, but they're actually words. This is lemons right here. And lemonade is written around, and um, it's just kind of put into a, a design. 
didn't notice that at first too. I love when it's like these little Easter eggs, these little hidden gems will say that if you, if you know what to look for, you'll see it. So what she also did was that she took this figure and she intentionally posed it in the position of Rosie the Riveter. So you see that, that famous image of Rosie holding that up and being strong and kind of overcoming. And so you see that, that same pose represented here. And it, it's the fortitude while maintaining an idea of self-care, drinking the fruits of your labor, you know, being able to work hard for something and then also enjoying it afterwards. And she said, by taking time to reflect and taste the lemonade, um, she focused on grieving and self-care and just allowing yourself time after things like this past tumultuous year that we've all experienced. And so it's, it's really a joyful piece in how to see how you can take the, the lemons that we've been thrown during COVID and really try to see a positive side to come out of it all. So our final piece that we're gonna share with you today, it comes to us from the Jewish Federation of Cincinnati, but it's the Young Adult Division. So we are looking at this work. Uh, naturally, you can automatically see the relation to Sukkot here. Um, but we'll take a look at what the artist says and then we can come back to it and talk about it a little bit more visually. So the artist for this piece is Ilana Kraus and it's written, Growing up, I would always remember feeling in awe when in a sukkah. My family would spend all day drawing and painting to help decorate while my brother went off to look for palm fronds to lay over the top trellis. There is circularity with Jewish tradition as it builds toward an appreciation for the passage of time. When both good times and bad times cycle through, you can feel at peace and in control when centered in your Jewish customs and traditions. There is clarity through the lens of looking up to something greater and more expansive above you. The symbolic nature of being in the sukkah and looking up to the sky connects to the spectrum of what life, love, family, tradition, and Judaism means for each of us looking to paint our own horizons. Wow, that's really beautifully written. <laughs> and especially if it's by a young adult, I find that that's just very eloquent in summing up a lot of the experience of being in the sukkah. Um, I'm standing here now and I'm looking above me and I, you know, seeing these fronds hanging down and there's definitely, I can see exactly what the artist is representing here. And it's kind of an awe of nature and being able to be at peace and present with where you are and realizing that no matter what, you're here and now. Well, thank you so much for watching this. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, thank you so much to Jessica who brings her art expertise to, to the table. It's a joy to, to come out here and see the exhibit each year. Um, it's something that I really look forward to not only making the art with you guys at Cedar Village every year, it's become a tradition, um, but also getting to see our work hanging alongside so many other great arts artworks. Um, so it's really lovely now also that we can make this video and bring it to you when you're not able to come here. So, and preserve it for the future. Absolutely. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Before we go, I just want to acknowledge that all Jewish life and programming here at Cedar Village are courtesy of the Jewish Home of Cincinnati. So thank you so much for your financial support and thank you for making this happen, Jewish Home of Cincinnati. And uh, with that, thank you, Jessica, and thank you all for watching. All right. Take care. Bye.